Ni hao, hello. My name is Isabella and I'm a student uh, here at Western Kentucky University. And the purpose of this talk is to discuss a uh, study abroad in China and answer some frequently asked questions that you may have. Um, in 2014, I studied abroad in China at uh, Beijing Language and Culture University from 2014 to 2015. So I'm kind of a study abroad veteran, and I am here today with my colleague Jeremy to kind of talk about like study abroad and what to expect. Uh, Jeremy is on his way to China, so with that said, I'm going to turn the introduction over to Jeremy. Hi, uh, I'm Jeremy, and I'll be studying in China this summer. Uh, and uh, I guess we can go right into the questions that uh, I have, and I'm sure that a lot of students who are on their way to study abroad in China might have. Okay. Uh, first of all, with uh, traveling, what kind of items would you suggest that students bring on their flight? Let's see. For their flight, I would um, first, be, I'm going to break that down into a couple of segments. One would be luggage. Um, for international flights uh, going um, to your international destination, you are allowed to take one check-in suitcase, one carry-on, and one personal bag, such as a purse or a backpack. You are allowed to take one extra bag, however, the airlines will charge you um, between an extra 70 to 100 US dollars to carry that, or if your first initial uh, check-in bag is overweight. So you want to keep that in mind as far as packing. But generally, um, that suffices as far as taking um, items internationally. However, when you come back, when you return, generally international flights will allow you to check two uh, bags for free, as well as your personal bag and your, um, your carry-on suitcase. So that'd be a good time to bring that souvenir to your family. And uh, of those items that you bring when you go into the flight, what kind of things are you allowed to bring? You are allowed to bring your electronics. electronics. As a matter of fact, the airlines um, specifically say, please pack your electronics in um, on the flight. So your laptop, tablet, cell phone, things like that. And also, as far as liquids, such as shampoo or you know conditioner, you want to pack like travel size, which you can get those in the stores. And they um, some stores also provide bottles that where you can decant items that you need into into bottles. I would highly recommend if you want to take like medicines, getting those in pill form so that you cut down on the amount of liquids that you take. And the other uh, requirement is that you place those in a one quart clear Ziploc bag. Um, you're gonna place your prescriptions in one bag and you're gonna uh, place your liquids in the other. And you cannot put any more liquids than what that uh, quart size bag will hold. And the purpose for that is when you uh, uh, go through security checkpoints in your flight, you'll have to place those in a basket and that makes it easier when you're going through security and it also saves time, which is something that is extremely important when you're and uh, you mentioned packing medicine. Uh, what kind of medicine do you recommend a student um, bring? Uh, medicines, you want to bring any prescriptions that you have, um, uh, which I want to make a little note about that. You make sure that you get enough medicines for the duration of your stay. So, for example, if you're staying for a year, you want to uh, make sure you go see your doctor, let them know that you're going to be abroad, and um, get your prescriptions, and they'll be happy to fill those for you. And also, any medicines that you know, um, uh, such as like Tylenol, Peps, uh, Pepto-Bismol, you definitely want to take that. And uh, maybe one cold medicine, I would take those uh, with me in, in small amounts. And if you can, get those in pill form. Uh, generally, the pharmacies in China will have things for like a cold or cough or things like that. But uh, just in case you're going to an area where a pharmacy is not readily available, uh, where um, maybe you won't be studying abroad in one of the bigger bigger cities, then that's just kind of a backup just in case. Uh, do you recommend when you're in China purchasing or bringing any books to help you? Uh, yes, I would highly recommend The Lonely Planet for China because it is um, it contains the names of the uh, places in both Chinese and English. So if you need to ask directions from um, a local or native speaker, then you can show that to them and they'll be able to guide you in the right direction. I would also recommend bringing your favorite uh, Chinese phrase book. There's um, hundreds of them out there on the market that you can look into and they'll have all the phrases that you need to, to ask questions or if you're when you um, get off the flight and you need to uh, get a taxi. Uh, another thing I would highly recommend, I wish I had gotten this um, before I left, there is a picture uh, bilingual dictionary, Chinese to English dictionary, and it's through uh, DK, which is the, a company that produces a lot of uh, well-known uh, books. It has the pictures of um, everyday items along with English, Pinyin, and also Chinese. 
So if you're needing to know a word or if you want to order food, then that's a good one to have. That sounds very useful. Yeah. Uh, do you have any, uh, what kind of documents should someone bring? Documents, you definitely want to bring your passport and it will, and with your visa, and just a special note on the visas, uh, depending on which program you uh, go through, more than likely your visa may be temporary and may last a duration of 30 days. And, um, or in some cases, you may have the visa that you need before you go. But that's just something I would um, note. If you receive a visa and it has X's on the bottom, that is a temporary visa. And it will last for duration of 30 days and you will need to go to a consulate or if your school has a visa office, you will need to turn in your passport to receive a, a residency permit if your time is there for six months or more. Um, I also bring any acceptance letters, any documents related to your study, um, your study abroad program. And you want to have those on hand for when you do um, registration for your classes and so on and so forth. So those are very important. I would also bring a photocopy of birth certificate and be sure before your departure that you make um, copies of those and leave those with a loved one so that they have those when they send you home. Um, and how is the housing in China? Housing in China um, depends on the university where you stay. Um, my university, for example, it was a little bit older, so we, there were dorms that were specifically for international students. There were dorms that were specifically for international students who were uh, self-paid, and then there were some for master's degree and then some for um, domestic students. My dorm was specifically for students who were receiving scholarships, so it was, um, I, I didn't pay anything to live there, so the conditions, um, it was, frankly put, was an older dorm, and it was a community bathroom, so on and so forth. I was able to live there just fine, but I did have some classmates that chose um, different living options. So it, it, just, it just really depends on the university itself. So it's one of those things where you kind of have to use your own judgment when you get there. But what I would highly recommend is staying in a, in a dorm for maybe a couple of weeks, and if you don't like it, you can change but it may take a little bit more time than um, you're going to have to invest a lot of time. You may literally have to go to the housing dorm, um, housing office every single day to get a dorm. I had a friend that did that. Wow. So it's just something to keep in mind. And you will have to pay extra, so you'll pay the difference between your dorm and the daily cost of the dorm like um, that you're well, choosing to move to um, per, per day in advance. So I had a friend that had to pay for her whole duration of her stay up front, but it's not that bad. And uh, what are the national holidays in China? There, there are numerous national holidays, but the ones that are um, really significant to students is Spring Festival, which you will receive a two-month stay, um, a two-month vacation. And during, during the holiday, it's a really good time to travel because um, in the bigger cities, there isn't, nobody is in there during, the, uh, during those holidays. Everyone returns to their um, hometowns and visits family and things like that. So Spring Festival is a good one because, again, you have two months. Um, if you're going to be there during the spring semester, which is from March to July, there will be about two uh, three-day holidays, such as the um, Tomb Sweeping Festival and the Dragon Boat Festival. That's also a good time to travel. And I did forget to mention one particular holiday in, if you're going in the fall semester, which is um, the national holiday. You will receive one week off, and that's another good time to travel for students. So it really depends on if you're staying there for a short term, for a semester, or for a year, and which semester that you will be uh, beginning your studies. But there are several opportunities um, to travel. You can also travel like that one week between uh, when you take your final examinations and when you're waiting for results, it's another good time to travel. So uh, you mentioned traveling uh, during the holidays. What places would you travel to? I would travel to, I would go to all the national landmarks in Beijing, the Great Wall, um, Forbidden City, Temple of Heaven, I mean all, all of them. I would go to Wang Fujing, go to the Wang Fujing foreign bookstore as well as the Chinese bookstore. That seems like an odd like destination for travel, but there's hundreds of um, books that you will absolutely love, especially if you're studying Chinese language or if you're taking any standard test or if you just want to read um, a Western um, um, book or novel that has been translated into Chinese. They have tons of books there. I would also go to Shanghai, um, visit the Historical Museum. I have a couple of friends that went there. Da Tong, Hong Kong, I mean the list is endless. And you definitely want to go to Xi'an 
to see the Terracotta Warriors because they are absolutely amazing up front, like in, in person. So lots of good places. I mentioned again some of those places you have to pay a little bit. Uh, what is the current exchange rate in China? Uh, current exchange rate in China is uh, one American dollar is about uh, six and a half RMB. However, um, as a student, there may be opportunities for you to receive a student discounts depending on which students you go to. You just show them your ID and um, you should receive a discount. However, in Xi'an, we found that um, since I was a scholarship, if you're a scholarship student or if you're a master's degree student, more than likely you'll have to pay full price. But generally, I think to go in to see the Terracotta Warriors, I think it was 120 yuan, which is about $20, which is you know not that bad. So you're seeing one of the great, you know, great historical landmarks in the world. So it was a really good experience. Uh, so how much money would you suggest the traveler bring? For a traveler, I would bring about, for a semester program, or some, summer short-term program, I would bring between 700 to 900 dollars, um, um, US dollars. For a semester program, I'd bring about 1,200. For a one-year program, I would bring about 3,000 US dollars. However, this is how I would do it. Generally, if you're studying abroad in China, there's a very good chance you're getting, receiving a scholarship. So what, what the purpose of the, um, of the money that you're bringing with you is in case of emergencies or in case um, you arrive um, two or three days before your scholarship begins so that you can pay for um, any uh, expenses that may come up. But what I would highly recommend is regardless of the amount of cash that you choose to bring, do not change more than 400 US dollars at a time because if you think you do the breakdown four times just of six or six and a half is going to be over um, 2,500 kwai. So that's more than enough to um, to live in to live in Beijing. In some in some cases, that's some of the um, Chinese natives' uh, monthly salary, depending on their um, line of work. So that is sufficient enough for you to live. And the fact that you're receiving scholarship, you're going to be living in a dorm. You, you know, you're going to have restaurants available, that kind of thing. So you don't have to uh, worry uh, worry about it. But you may need um, you will need dollars for when you return, and that sort of or emergencies.